Welcome to City Farmers instructional video on how to construct your own worm composting bin. My name is Lauren and I'm the worm composting instructor here. So I'll introduce you to the classic bin that we use. So this bin as you see it has a lower tray and an upper tray and the lower tray will catch the drippings from the bin which can be used to make a really neat fertilizer called compost tea. I'll show you the components of the bin. We've got a nice bag here of bedding and the bedding here is what's called the brown layer. So you've got straw and shredded newspaper and dried fall leaves also work really well. In addition, you have a little container of food waste. This is approximately one liter and that's how much you're adding each week for the first month. Also got a small container of sand, which is important for the worms to be able to use to chew up the food that you're adding because they don't have teeth. Also water, very, very important. Without water, the worms won't be able to breathe, so that's the number one thing you must remember is to never let your bin dry out. Also, we've got a really neat book here called Worms Eat My Garbage. It's a very good resource for troubleshooting and all things related to worms. And your handy trowel in case you don't want to get your hands into the worms, your trowel can also serve you well. So, what you do is you're going to take your bedding, dump it here into the bin, just below these nice air holes here. Bedding is very important and you always want to have enough to cover up the food waste. Why, you may ask? You don't want the food to be on top of the bedding because additional smells will seep out through the holes. So to prevent odors, always have at least three inches of bedding covering your food. So that's it for now. And of course, the most important thing is the worms. For a bin this size, you need about a half pound of red wriggler worms. And we only have a small portion here today, but if you were to have a full unit here, you'd have almost the entire bag complete full of worms here. So, we can sample the food waste here. So you've got eggshells, banana peels, a variety of fruits and vegetables. It's important to mix it well and to not have predominantly one type of food. So especially citrus peels, you don't want to have most of it as citrus. It'll create too much of an acidic environment for your worms. Coffee grounds also in moderation. And eggshells are good to help neutralize the acid in the bin, but they break down very slowly. So you must rinse them off well, crush them up, and not add more than one a week. The food, what I'll do here, lift up the corner of the bedding, dump the food in, cover the food right back up. Next, I'm gonna add some water, spring throughout the bin. You're going for a wrung out sponge type of consistency. So not soaking wet, but when you're feeling the bin, you should always have some trace of water. If not, the worms will die. Extra water will seep out the bottom of the bin here. And you don't want that to be sitting for a long time. Every two weeks at least, you're gonna siphon up the extra liquid, put it aside and add 10 parts water. So it's 10 to one dilution, making something called compost tea, which you can add to your plants. Now I'm going to stick a handful of sand into the bin. This helps the worms break down the food scraps. It will store some internally in something called a gizzard and it will allow them to break up the food. Sand's in, food's in, water is in. Now we're going with the worms. So again, you'd be adding half pound of red regular worms. And the food is going to be added once a week, every week, starting with one liter. And after a month, you can then progress to two liters. So that being around two large yogurt containers worth of food. And the maximum amount you'd ever put in a bin of this size is four liters. By reducing the food to around that amount, you're really reducing the chance of having problems such as odors, too toxic of an environment. If the worms cannot digest the food in time, it's gonna result in too much food relative to the bedding. So you're going one liter per week for the first month then two liters per week in a separate container, a separate corner each time. And finally, you can go to around four liters per week at around the third month or so. Depends on the temperature, they eat more in the summer and less in the winter. So, it's as simple as that. So that is your worm bin, and you can be really careful with where you place your bin. You don't want it in direct sunlight. As you can imagine, once this lid is on, this bin will retain heat. So you have to make sure it's away from direct sunlight. You can do that by having some nice potted plants around it, even something like a wicker screen if you're placing it on your balcony, which is the most common option. 
Other options include having it in your garage, that tends to work very well, or on a patio of sorts, but you must keep it as close to your building as you can to have as much ambient heat as you can, so it's gonna help to keep the bin warm in the colder temperatures. So the worms really don't like anywhere below four degrees or above 24 degrees. And one really important thing as well is in order to reduce the chance of fruit flies, because people do not like that, one main thing, make sure that you do take out this liquid at least every two weeks. That stagnant water will attract flies. And also you want to make sure that you really cover up your food every time you add it in. It can be tempting to just throw in that food, but if you don't cover it up, the smells that are coming out through these holes will attract flies. So covering up the food is very, very important. Additionally, you want to make sure that you do have enough vegetables. If you're just putting in fruit, as you know the name implies, the, fruit, the flies will tend to come. So really balance out the fruits and vegetables and don't overfeed your worms. So you're not going to increase from that one liter per week immediately if the worms don't seem to be eating at what you're giving them. And those are the main tips. We also have a nice little fruit fly recipe that you can get at cityfarmer.org which describes how to you know, control the fruit fly population if they have made their way into your bin. All right, well, that's it. Good luck composting.